The reason you're with us is because you, the, the fantastic immediate family are back. A brand new record, um, second album has just been released. Um, we have to talk about the the brilliant video as well. But just for those who don't know, please explain who and what is the immediate family. Well, the immediate family is an offshoot of a group of musicians I've been playing with for 54 years. Um, Danny Korchmar, Russ Kunkel, and myself started with James Taylor back in 1970. A couple of years later, Wadi Wachtel joined up with us. And uh, originally, uh, uh, Danny and myself and Russ had a band called The Section, which was the backup band for James Taylor and Jackson Brown and Linda Ronstadt, different artists. Um but as time went on, you know, everybody was going their separate ways. We would always work together when we could. But a few years ago, Danny Korchmar got offered a record deal from a label called Vivid Records in Japan uh, to do a solo album. And he called all the, his old teammates and we all uh, got in the studio with him and uh, we finished his album in a couple of days uh, as we normally would. And when it was through, they said, what are you going to call it? It's Danny Korchmar. What do you want to call it? And he thought, well, these guys are my immediate family. Um, so he called it the immediate family. And it got released in Japan and, and it had done quite well in Japan. And then we went over and toured. And then when we came back, we looked at each other and said, this is way too much fun. I mean, to, to be all back together as a, as a group. So we just... Uh, dropped the Danny Korchmar at that point and became the immediate family. Fantastic. And so, yeah, we're with a label called Quarto Valley Records here uh, in the States and still uh, I have a connection with Vivid Records in Japan. And, uh, and now we've just, we had our, this new album was basically finished before COVID. Okay. But, but because of COVID, which kind of screwed up everything for everybody for those couple of years, um, we held off doing anything with it because there was no way to go out and promote it and do any gigs or do anything. And in the interim, also, this a documentary movie uh, was made by Denny Tedesco, who did the Wrecking Crew movie. And we thought, well, let's just hold off and get all of this stuff out at the same time. That way we can kind of you know, cross collateralize uh, promotion and all that. So the movie's been out for a while now and still doing incredibly well. And the album's out and the Blu-ray version of the documentary is just being released with three extra hours. Oh, wow. Uh, in it. So it's all pretty exciting right now. We just finished doing the Rock Legends cruise um, with the immediate family and some, some uh, and a bunch of gigs. And we are now looking uh, at booking work throughout the year so it's all good it's pretty exciting absolutely those cruise things they always look fantastic i'd love to get to one but they're, they're always on on your side of the world but uh, just speaking about the the movie because the movie was amazing I, I i watched it and it was it was as though i could have watched another hour and to, to hear that there's going to be three more hours of of extras yeah. and stuff that's fantastic yeah now I'm, i mean we the first time we saw a screening of it we it kind of freaked us out <laughs> it's just <laughs> Because we're not, we're used to being sidemen and you're yeah. not used to being the center of attention. And all of a sudden to see a movie that, that is uh, laying our lives out like an autopsy table <laughs> is uh, pretty, pretty amazing. But uh, I, we were so um, touched by all of the interviews mm -hmm. uh, that they did from, you know, James Taylor to Phil Collins, to Linda Ronstadt, to Carol King and everybody that was involved. Um it's uh, I'm incredibly proud for Denny Tedesco, who who directed the movie and to the production team. Uh, it's it's uh, it's something that came very unexpected in our careers to suddenly have uh, this documentary done. But it's won about 18 film festivals. Yeah. And, um, uh, and uh, I've been to a, a lot of the screenings and it always gets a standing ovation at the end. And. I get to do question and answer with the audience, and that's really fun. Uh, just to see what kind of uh, what it's touched in different people, because these songs that we've worked on are so uh, iconic for people. They they represent marriage, divorce, life, death, births. You know, you name it. That somebody will hear a song and they go, "God, I remember that." And you always get people coming up to you going, you know, what you guys have done is the soundtrack to our lives. And 
so it's it's real flattering and stuff but still at this point i'm thrilled to be working every day yes so i'm getting ready to hit the road tomorrow again and um and that for me is my personal joy is always having work to look forward to and not dwelling on my history a man of your talent you'll always have work don't you worry about that and just to blow the ego up even more you mentioned some of the people that are interviewed for it but you didn't mention the likes of don henley was was interviewed and keith richards and stevie nicks is on oh, there yeah. and david crosby and and if you haven't checked out this this movie yet then you really do have to and and as leland says there that if there's extras on the on the on the blu-ray or the bonus discs or whatever it is you have to check it out because it's it's just remarkable and and one of the one of the best bits of it is the the round table i think it is between all of you and you just sit talking about memories and it's just wonderful to must be a fly on the wall listening to you guys talk yeah. about these special special things well on the blu-ray i i just had lunch with denny uh tedesco yesterday and he said on the blu-ray there's a lot of that because that round table we sat there all day oh wow so you know oh, there's lots and lots of footage from you know storytelling and there's a lot of other people that were interviewed that you know at a certain point when they're making a movie you have to make decisions as to what's going to make it and what's not and uh, on the first cut of the movie, there was a, a number of things that weren't in the final cut that I really liked, but because of flow and all that. And he said, no, that stuff's all in, in the Blu-ray. So now I have to get a Blu-ray player. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I'll be getting that as well. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. just talking about Skin in the Game, the record itself. I mean, when you guys get together, because you've been playing together for so long, as you said, 50 plus years, which is incredible. When you sit to, to write a, an album or a record like this, how does the writing process go? Do, do you all bring something to the table? Does one take the lead or does it all kind of come together organically? Well, it's a little of all that. Um, one of the guys like Wadi might have an idea or Danny has an idea and, and they bring it, um, to us. Hold on one second. I was going to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> um, th they'll bring it and, and play it. And then we all kind of jump on it and, and craft our own parts within it. Other times we're like jamming and mm -hmm. something will evolve out of it and that becomes a group thing. But, um, once we start working, we work really fast. It's it, it does not take long. I mean, we pretty much, I think, made the whole record in a couple of weeks. You know, I mean, probably a week of tracking. And we're very really fortunate that Jackson Brown is is a dear dear friend of all of us, and he has a fabulous studio in town, so he lets us use his studio, and. Uh, so we uh we go go in and then we're pretty focused by the time we get in the studio we've pr we're pretty dialed in once we start listening to it there might be a little bit of fine tuning but most of the tracks are within like you know maybe two or three takes at the most of them and and there's very little uh going back and fixing and then uh Coot, uh Wadi has a, a studio at home and Steve Postel also has a studio so once we get all the basic tracks done, then we would end up going to one of those guys' houses uh, to do, you know, work on vocals and uh, maybe some solos, things like that. But the but it really is a a quick process because we read each other so well after this much time together that uh, one, once we sit down, it's very very focused. And and the remarkable thing about the band to me, you hear about so many bands that they're always bickering and fighting and there's issues all the time. And we've never had any of that. I mean, we have differences of opinion, but we approach them and discuss them and resolve them. And we look at it as a, as a democratic process. So that if out of the five of us, if, if the major, if three of us say, well, it really should be this, that's what we do. You know? So it's a, it, it's a really easy uh, process for us to make music together it, it's very organic oh well there you go that was actually going to be one of my questions because obviously family members they fall out they do squabble and and you guys are obviously masters of your craft so when it comes to um mixing it and getting the final the tracks down there was no uh, my bass should be louder or your guitar needs to be quieter there, there was none of that was there well the, the guitars should always be quieter but then <laughs> but, but see there's three of them so they win that's yes. <laughs> the democracy um Absolutely. Well, you know we, we're all musical you know, so the decisions really, they can be discussed and you might not get what you think is right, but the wrong in, if I want to push for something and it's not happening, what's, what's happening is not far from what I wanted. 
it's not like it's a huge difference in things. It's it's nuances and subtleties that we're looking at. So I'm always happy just to say, okay, whatever you want, because I know I'm going to be happy with it. It may not be exactly what I wanted, but it it certainly doesn't. You're not sitting there going, oh, this is this sucks now. This is horrible. You know, it's that's not the case with it. So. And anyone who's watching, listening to this now, who's not checked out the the new record, then um, just for anyone like that, can you describe to us what people can expect from from this record? Um, diversity, um, because it it reflects the personalities of all five members of the group. So it's not like a one trick pony album. There's there's really some beautiful ballads on it. There's a uh, um, some kick-ass rock and roll and just everything in between. So I think it, it, it it's one thing it is not as boring because uh, it has a, it has a little something for everybody in it. And uh, that's the thing that makes the band work so well for us is having it is uh, as similar as our backgrounds all have been because of our relationships. There's uh, very diverse personalities in the group. When you're looking at a band with three guitar players in it, that can be chaos. <laughs> and we're really lucky that Wadi, Steve, and Cooch all play very different. And uh, so when they get together, they fall into this thing really kind of, like I said, organically, where they kind of almost anticipate what the next guy's going to do. And each guy has his own voice. So it it rather than three guitar players, it's it's more of an orchestral version of it because everybody's got their space in it and and get featured. And then Russ Kunkel, the drummer, and myself, we sit behind them and just stare at each other and go, these guys are out of their minds. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And one question I always ask people yeah. with new with new albums out, it puts people on the spot as well. Do you have a personal favorite track on this record? Um, not yet. I, I've I've been living with it, but I've I still find something in each one that I'm enjoying. So I really haven't honed in on uh, like saying this one's my favorite. I'm really still enjoying it as an entirety, and that's one of the things I find so important in in this uh, day and age is um, trying to find projects where they read from top to bottom. Yeah. Rather than because so many albums, you know, there's no hook, there's no sense between tracks or stuff where we're, we still are working old school. And when we're in the mastering lab, we're sitting there thinking about the time between songs and how we're still thinking of an A side and a B side rather than a running, a, a, just a running order. And that's the, one of the nice things is having uh, released the album also on vinyl. Because that really shows the intention of how we wanted this thing to be listened to. And plus, it's a beautiful package and the record is blue. <laughs> I mean, it's a, so it's a, it's it's pretty great because it was, you know, when we first all started, everything was was vinyl. Yeah. And then, you know, and then as cassettes and CDs and, and all that stuff uh, came in and you saw uh, turntables relinquished to scratching you know, for hip hop and, and rap. And then all of a sudden now people are buying turntables yes. again and, and buying vinyl. And and I've been on a couple of tours where we've had all the different um, mediums uh, available that at the uh, swag counter and, uh, and the uh, LPs have outsold the CDs. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's really interesting, this kind of pendulum having swung the other way, but that's the way I would want to listen to it as, as this intentional order, because for us, that was important to have one song going into the next. <laughs> 